Beyond the Ring, a podcast that covers all things in the stock show industry from the informative to the insane, starring Ryan Rash, No Means No, and Dale Hummel. Be strong and push forward. Now on with the show. Welcome to Beyond the Ring. This is Dale Hummel, along with co-star Ryan Rash. Hello, hello, hello. Ryan, it's it's great that we had a chance to be at Louisville this week. And, and again, we thank the people there behind the scenes at Louisville to make sure that happened. And, and it's amazing to me that they were able to pull that off as, as COVID numbers are, are climbing and a lot of things in the state of Kentucky are shutting down. They were certainly able to, to get something accomplished that, that I, I guess I didn't even expect to happen. And it's amazing to me that I'm sitting here in this hotel room talking to you instead of being at the bar at Louisville. But you know what? <laughs> Here I am. And that's because I love all the people that listen to us, not because I love Dale. So I'm here for you people. I am sober and waiting to go, but I'm here for you people. And let's let's talk about the huge, huge support we had from all the exhibitors and, and the families that were there. For the most part at Louisville, everybody was wearing a mask. And and it was it was impressive that they did so. I know they had to make a couple announcements to put the masks on so the show could continue. But Ryan, I, I guess I thought that the exhibitors were appreciative to be there and, and doing what they needed to do to show. Well, I think they kicked out some dairy folks and sent them home because they wouldn't conform. And so after that, they knew they were serious. But I'm here now, took part in the judging contest as an official. I haven't heard anybody griping, complaining. Everybody's been wearing their mask and doing their deal and their duty and so it's great and groovy proud to know all you people actually ever several people have been like i have my mask on i'm like that's right keep it on <laughs> and we just ha- we just have to do it whether we agree with it or not and i appreciate everybody doing it and ryan i'd say outside of the mask and obviously putting on some wristbands to, to get in the gate once you get in there it was pretty much louisville getting in the gate wasn't nearly as complicated as i thought they checked your little thing and sent you on your way but yeah it's been business as usual and again louisville is my favorite show always and so i'm been having a great time and uh i was very proud that dale was there on site on location and he had just a glorious white net gator on that matched his blue and white shirt just eloquently so it was great <laughs> now if i would have had my traditional white shirt that they were all dirty by the time you got there I, I would have probably switched to a black would that have been appropriate i didn't know you had a black shirt sir no but not black shirt i do not have one of the black uh, face mask wrap whatever whatever you oh call or black neck. yeah that'd work that'd be fine but dale was we were laughing because some small children came up and asked if I was there when I hadn't got there yet. And they wanted to take their picture with me. And then Dale said, I'll take a picture with you. And they, didn't want, <laughs> they didn't want a picture with Dale. That he doesn't mean. understand why. And I said, well, sir, it's because you dress like that. And I dress like I do. Not exactly an accurate story, but it, but it's entertaining enough. Uh-huh. Other things happening. We're, we're, we're talking about COVID numbers and COVID lockdowns. You can't go spend Thanksgiving with your family. It's, it's, it's really getting, it's a little out of hand, maybe. It's the best way to put it. It's very out of hand. And there's states that are saying two, only two households can like commingle or whatever else. And this is a terrible thing for America. And I know that most people probably aren't following it or aren't going to follow the rules, all this stuff. Personally, it is not going to affect me because I judge shows on every holiday. So I don't have to be with my family. So (laughs) as long as the show doesn't get shut down, this will not affect me whatsoever at all. So there we go. Arkansas, Thanksgiving. I'm coming for you, baby. I'm ready. It's it's hard for me to imagine. And, and they're they're doing this in Chicago. They're doing it in California, Oregon, maybe Washington State. I mean, a lot of states, Michigan. a lot of regions, Michigan. And and we just came from and, and Ryan's still there. I don't know how many people are on the grounds at Louisville, but it, it's hard to believe that we're in that environment with a face mask on, but but showing livestock. And you're not allowed to have a family, more than four or six people at your home for Thanksgiving, only from one family group or two house. I just can't even wrap my head around it. And this this crap, and I hear the West Coast is trying to do it, that you're, you're, they're encouraging you not to leave the state of California or Oregon. If you do, you have to quarantine for 14 days. Where the hell do they think the virus is? Just in one state or one region? It's, it's everywhere. 
Well, I'll tell you what I am beyond myself about. Evidently, Rona only happens after 11. Because now their answer is to shut down all my bars at 11 o'clock because the Rona only spreads after 11 o'clock. It is incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I I don't know what to say. I don't know what to predict with if the Biden administration is coming in, how far they're going to take this. But I do know that stock shows are going to continue to go on. We may have some cancel. We may have some face masks. We may do some things different. But there's no question we proved this spring and summer that things continue. And I think they'll continue to be more replacement slash pop-up shows. And the fact that that is going to happen is encouraging and that our industry is is that strong because it's going to devastate some of these small businesses and the mental state of a lot of people out there. And the fact that we can go out in the barn and work with these animals, we can go to a livestock show like like there at Louisville this week. We're very, very blessed to have those those activities that we're still doing. And that's because the people in our industry just step up and get it done. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. But like, I don't want to like shy away from current events at hand. But like, literally, we don't know who's going to be the next president right now because Trump's in a lot of litigation and he's winning more court cases than he's not. But and none of these results have actually been canvassed and official yet. They've even, if you go and look at CNN and the used to be Fox News that I don't look at those people <laughs> anymore. Like they've actually taken some electoral votes away and turned them undecided and all this. So this is still really up in the air. But I I think that obviously going to be Trump or Biden and Trump is all for opening up and Biden is obviously not. If he does get in, I do think that that he is going to encourage a lot more of this lockdown nonsense santa claus can't leave the north pole and, and so i mean I, well what do we do we're going to cancel christmas or what no i i think that's on the agenda it, it just it, it, it absolutely is santa only gets out once a year folks you gotta let him have his damn day <laughs> you do have to let him have his day and and i keep waiting for this master plan that biden has and i believe the master plan is wear a mask and everything will go away just like that that's the only thing he's released is national mask mandate. Okay, sir, we need a little bit more than that. Like, I, I need to know a little bit more about what we're going to be doing for the next little bit. You don't want to know a little bit more because his, his little bit more is going to be extreme lockdown. And I want to go on the record again that the only damn thing an extreme lockdown is doing, it is slowing the spread. But if you were to lock all the way down like many other countries, a good friend of mine in Canada has been locked down for a long time. And as soon as they open up a little bit, guess what pops right back? We have to build herd immunity via exposure and or vaccine. And the combination of those two is what's going to get us over the hump. And you know what? We're, we're numbers are rising here in the U.S. in terms of COVID positive. So we're building herd immunity right now. As we continue to build that and go into vaccines being released, this is all good news. And if they would continue to open this up and not go backwards locking down, lock down those that are vulnerable, open everything else wide open. We're probably two to three months before the main population sees a vaccine. By then, we're, we're approaching herd immunity. The vaccine puts us over herd immunity. Spring break would happen. But there's two different vaccines and out their test results, and they both are over 90% positive. Yeah. And like Biden and Harris don't accept that. They're not accepting the vaccine is real or that's not safe or where, where are they going with it now? It doesn't exist. I mean, we got... We don't discuss it. We don't talk about it. They don't, obviously, they don't answer questions. But I mean, like, these are two companies that have, like, put this out there in the world and no response. I think outside of the inner city and even those in the, the business community in the, in the larger cities, outside of that, I don't think people are going to do it, Ryan. I don't think they will lock down again like, like we did originally. I mean, it's bizarre. And like, again, we're kind of in a bubble at the show and doing whatever we're doing or whatever, but I, I'm sure I've watched more news than most people here. But anyway, of course, it, it, it'll be after Biden takes the office, if he takes the office. But like, I don't think people are going to do this again, even if they're told. No, they're, they're, that isn't going to happen. And speaking of the vaccine, my daughter, youngest daughter, Katie, comes to me today and she says, Dad, does the Discovery Channel lie? And I'm thinking... I think the Discovery Channel and Animal Planet, I think they're all kind of one. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a 
pretty big supporter there. Oh my I, god, here we go again. Okay, I'm <laughs> so I, I don't know. I don't I don't think they lie, but and she may have interpreted it wrong, but she was convinced the Discovery Channel was telling people that if you get the COVID nineteen vaccine, it will have some type of tracking element in it where the government can follow you around. I, I think she's confused, but I, I'm not sure. I tell you what, whatever tracking chip they put in me, that thing's gonna be working overtime. <laughs> That poor bastard's gonna quit. Oh, it's just it just amazes me. And and Ryan, I'd like to go on the record one more time. Oh God, here we go again. I am very angry with China. Oh, what did China do this time? Very angry. What China did was release this damn virus on the entire world, and who's holding them accountable? Nobody. Do you even hear anything anymore that and uh, the, the world news or or the last thing I heard about China. Was when the yen was going to hell when it looked like Trump was going to win the presidency on election night. That's the last thing I heard. That was a that that hour or two was just a good feeling. I, I would do anything to get that back. And I my, think about this: if and we hope to God it doesn't happen. If Biden gets in that that White House, China will not only never be held responsible; he's going to give them a green light to do whatever they want again, and we will continue to be taken advantage of. Oh, there's no doubt. And I know you think, and and I'm not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist at all, but I am still right now more convinced, whether it's a natural virus or man-made altered virus that was released, whether it's accidental or intentional, it happened. Okay. In, In my mind, it may have been a real occurring virus that they released. It may have been a man-made virus they released, but irregardless, everything that happened through COVID-19 worldwide worked in China's favor especially getting Trump out of office. Three years from now, there will probably be a plethora of information that proves that absolutely correct. I think that actually what surprises me, and I guess that's just proves my belief in Americans and this country, is that even in this unprecedented uncertainty, we don't know who the president is, we don't know what's going to happen, we're in the middle of a pandemic, you know, all these people are literally trying to take our holidays away from us. I, I think most people are just trucking right on along. That, I think, is good. But I still say, at some point, people are going to have enough of this shit. I think we're already there. I think a ma- the majority of the population are there. And it's it's hard for me to even, I think we're waking up in a bad dream when you're at Louisville showing livestock outside of having a mask on. You can't even imagine what's going on in the rest of the country and how tight they're locking things down when we're living an almost normal life this week. Like I said, we're in a bubble. And so like when we get home, our bubbles, probably a lot of people's bubbles going to burst. But I think that what the stuff they're doing right now, I mean, it hasn't got to the business side of it yet, but they are literally trying. I think they're being more radical about a person or Americans' personal freedoms to choose who they want to have holidays with or who they want to visit and all this stuff than they ever were during any of this. Like, this shit is nuts. I, I think it's a totalitarian state situation. If we, if we look at history, the extreme left is attempting to, to, to lock. I mean, it's total control. They're even going through, do you hear about this blacklist? Anybody that's ever supported Trump or in their administration? Ryan, I think we might have made it on the list. We need to be fearful. We're going to be blacklisted from the extreme left. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, there's probably no doubt. It is frightening to me, everything that's going on. And it, the only thing that I think is is a little bit positive about some of those crazy, crazy extreme left, some of the moderate Democrats are speaking up just a little. Not a lot, but a little. There appears to be a little bit of division in the party. I think we're doing okay for the amount of uncertainty that we're going through, but like, I don't think the masses realize exactly because none of us know, but like when it all hits, oh, there is going to be some shit go down. Let's pray we hold Georgia and and that will slow it down. It'll, it'll stop some of the, the real crazy. The next six months, regardless of who wins, I think it's going to be wild. Well, let's hope our stock show community stays strong and and keeps moving forward. And speaking of that, let's move on to our main topic. This week's sponsor for the main topic 
is Cowpokes Work and Western, located in Anderson, Indiana. This is the largest family-owned Western retail in the state of Indiana. Huge selection with unmatched customer service. I had the opportunity to stop in at Cowpokes while at North American this year. Was able to visit with both Krista and Molly while my daughter and wife did some shopping. If you are unable to make it to the North American, you can shop cowpokesonline.com, use Hummel 15, and receive a 15% discount. Why is it Hummel 15? Why isn't it the Gay 15? We should have put the Gay 15. I I didn't realize they were doing it, or I would have definitely gone that direction. Something like that. This is discriminatory. It is. It is. I think you should file suit. This is racist. Anyway, moving on. The best part is this week. Ryan and I have the honor to visit with the 2020 Legends of Louisville, including all four youth that captured the Grand Champion Market Animal Honors at the 2020 North American Livestock Exposition. Again, this was my idea. (laughs) Everything is Ryan's idea. Everything. Just the good ones. The bad ones are all yours. What about the Mother Nature and Form to Function? The the worst. The worst. And those are definitely yours. I thought you came up with that a long time ago. No. mm -mm. I don't have Mother Nature speed dial. Only you do, Dale. Our first legend is Paige Pence. Paige resides with her family in New Carlisle, Ohio. Paige is not only the exhibitor of the Grand Champion Market Goat Weather, but also the Grand Champion Weather Dam at the 2020 North American International Livestock Exposition. Paige, most youth only dream of capturing one of these titles in a lifetime, and you're able to get them both accomplished in the same year. Congratulations. Thank you. (laughs) So, Paige, basically you are Miss... Louisville, America of 2020. So how does that feel? Like, did you get a crown, a sash with your banners or any of that? (laughs) Honestly, it was really emotional. I think I got more tears than I did hugs. I would have cried the most. (laughs) But um, it was pretty cool. And after the Doe show, I was like, I don't think it could be, it could get any better. And it just, it did. It got way better. (laughs) I was say, fake news, because it did the next day. <laughs> hey, tell me a little bit about yourself and how long you've been involved in kicking ass in the goat shows and all that, because obviously that's what you do. <laughs> so I've been showing for eight years. I've showed the four species, cattle, pig, sheep, and goats. Goats were kind of what I started out with. Um, we have about 30 headed bread does that I keep records of. Um, I help with during kidding season. And then when spring sales come around, I'm responsible for picturing and selling them to the 4-H and FFA youth. Um, so that's pretty cool. I don't play any sports. Sports are overrated. Yeah, they are. <laughs> so showing live sucks pretty much all I do. Uh, do you do anything else like school, FFA, 4-H, anything like that? So this year, I am the 2020-2021 Miami East FFA treasurer. So that's been pretty fun. (laughs) Um, And also, I help my family on our farm. So I'm mostly responsible for picking up the big round bales, helping bale straw. And this fall, I'm responsible for the grain cart. So you're the treasurer. So do they give you the actual money? No, but I was... I think we should protest. I think you should get the actual money. I don't know if I'm that responsible. They but, elected you. Evidently, you are. I vote yes. <laughs> well, I was able to do our fruit sales this year, and the last two days of it was this last Thursday and Friday. So I got a, I got to kind of skip out on that, which I felt bad. Oh, well, that's good. Especially <laughs> since I don't let you keep the money that yeah. you're taking care of. That's so rude. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your weather dam and your market weather. Which one did you like better? And you have to pick one. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> so their names were Kelsey and Carissa because they came from Kelsey Piper and his sister's name is Carissa. I know it's kind of cringy, but I thought it was cool. <laughs> so Kelsey, we bought him out of an April sale online. He is out of a ladies man on a mojo. And he was easily one of my favorite goats this year. He was perfect for showmanship. I think Dale can for sure tell you that he was. <laughs> and in this one, Paige was was out there with that that weather and in goats are are difficult at times. And Paige yeah. usually works through it irregardless. But this one, I did not see this one be difficult, Paige. He was stuck the entire time. <laughs> Just about like a picture. It was awesome. And I expect that from you, but it's hard to to get to that point where he, you just didn't give him, give the 
Dr. Sk- Dr. Griner a bad look once. Well, thank you. <laughs> I think one of my favorite things is when it came to showing him, did it matter if I was on the brace or showing him down? He looked good either way. And then the way that his neck tied out of his shoulder was another thing that I really loved. And he was big backed and he stayed fresh. He did show in the spring and then he went to our OYLE um, in July. So for the past three months, he was just growing hair. And I was honestly really excited to see how he clipped out. And then my doe was also from an April sale. She was a walk the line alley cat. And she also showed the spring slick. So I was a little nervous about growing all that hair back. But she looked like a totally different goat. So basically, you're still saying it's a tie. You're not giving me an answer on which one you like more. I really don't want to pick. (laughs) It would probably be the weather. Ah, see? Finally, I get an answer. Good job. (laughs) <laughs> How much money did you get for winning the weather show, by the way? I got 8000 Did they give you one of those big checks? Yes, I was. I saw that and I was so... Did you take it through the drive through and put it in the window and ask them to cash it? Because <laughs> I did that as a child. I'm not going to lie. I got I one of those big checks and they did not think I was funny, but I thought I was hilarious. So, but no, that's cool. You got two big banners, which everybody wants a Louisville banner and you got two. And a crown and a sash and all kinds of stuff. But other than being Miss Louisville Goat America, (laughs) what are your future goals in the show ring and elsewhere in life? So I am a senior this year and I have an extra year. So that means I have two years left. And I hope that one day before I'm done, I can say that I've won all four of the majors, which I know that's like a really... It's a it's a goal. I don't know if it can be accomplished, but got to dream big. Always dream big. My family and I work really hard, so I think if we keep on the road we're going that maybe one day it's possible. So that's for showing other things. I guess just keep working hard and trying to figure out what college I want to go to. Which ones are in the running? I looked at Lakeland the other day which Tara was there. She showed me around. And I know some other people have talked about Redlands and Blackhawk, but I just, I need to figure it out. (laughs) So you're obviously looking at judging schools. I'm taking it. Yes. Ah, good girl. Good girl. (laughs) So after you win all four major shows and become a judging queen, (laughs) do you have any idea of what you want to do? Like, for like long term any ideas so far that is a really difficult question (laughs) i didn't know the answer when i was your age either but i got asked it all the time so i'm gonna ask y'all because i thought it was an unfair question when i got asked that every time i want to make your show so i'm making you feel the same pain (laughs) (laughs) i know i want to be involved with livestock for sure i'm really interested on the genetic side of it um this year we first tried out aiing our does and two of my shadows got sent to Iowa to get flushed. So that was pretty cool experience. So I guess that's what I'm interested in. And we'll see how it goes. I got a little bit, I guess. Yeah, you're, you're a young girl. Do you have any advice for any other exhibitors? That, or want to give any special shout outs to anybody that's helped you along the way in terms of your success? Of course. So my advice for younger exhibitors is to keep working hard no matter what, because when I wanted to give up, we found new opportunities and were blessed this whole year. And I couldn't be more thankful for all the people that have stood behind me. There's a lot of people I would like to thank, but I'm afraid I'm going to forget some of them. So the main ones include Kelsey Pfeiffer, Glenn Martin, Jamie and Dina Smith, Cooper Bounds, and most importantly, my parents. That's a pretty good list right there. (laughs) <laughs> Excellent, Paige, and and I'm going to step in here just a minute because I've I've known. Did Paige. we invite you? You did not, and I, I oh, wasn't okay. going to get an invitation, so I thought I better just jump in. Oh, but I, I've known Paige and her family for for many years, and consider them fierce competitors in in a family that that puts in the time, the effort to really get the job done, and not just in the goats, but they're they're across several species, and in any time that Paige decide she's going to going to jump into something she puts everything she can into it there's kids out there that that get the job done in the show ring Paige gets the job done at home she gets the job done in the barn 
in the ring, everything revolves around her ability and natural abilities and earned abilities through experience and, and work ethic. But I, I couldn't compliment Paige any, any further than, than the fact that she, she accomplished something that I'm not sure anybody's ever done. And uh, capturing both those titles at Louisville is, is a great testament of, of just where she's at and what her abilities are. And Paige, sincere congratulations to you. And it's, it's certainly well-earned. And it's, it's good to see people that, that put that kind of time and effort in do well. And uh, we, we acknowledge your accomplishments and are excited for you. Thank you very much. I appreciate this. And I appreciate getting to talk to you guys and being on this podcast. It's definitely one of my favorite ones. <laughs> And that's because of me, not Dale. We all know that, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but no, seriously, Paige, congratulations. That is a huge, huge accomplishment. And again, I don't know if it's ever been done before or will be done again, but you can say that it happened to you. So we are very, very excited for you. And good luck at the future shows and in everything that you do. I'm sure you'll continue your winning ways. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And we're going we're gonna to keep working hard. And we're going to see where it gets me. Awesome. I can't be any more blessed with what I've accomplished already. I I honestly don't think this year could possibly get any better. <laughs> well, it's almost over, so probably not. But you never know what's going to happen. So, And there's always the next year. So continue to dream big and do well, girl. Thank you very much. Our next Louisville legend is Matthew Exum from Paragold, Arkansas. Matthew is a proud exhibitor of the Grand Champion Market Hog at the 2020 North American International. Matthew, congratulations. Thank you. So, Matt, uh, that's a huge accomplishment. Tell us a little bit about how long you've been showing, and do you show other species other than hogs? So, I've been showing for five years at the county, district, state, and national level. I have shown broilers at my state fair. The first year I showed them, I had the champion broiler pen at the Arkansas State Fair. So I was pretty proud about that. Pigs is my main project. Cool deal. So other than showing pigs, what other things are you involved in school? Do you do sports or any other activities? I don't do sports. I enjoy hunting and fishing. And I'm also involved with the 4-H and FFA livestock judging team. Well, that's cool. And I agree with you that sports are totally overrated. Tell me a little bit about this grand champion hog at Louisville. Where'd you get him? What'd you like about him? What's he out of sire and damn wise? Just give me the 411 on this on this beast that you won the show with. Absolutely. She was from Jordan Leatherman, Final Drive Genetics. She would have been purchased at a live sale on the farm called D Cell. Her sire would be Goosebumps, which is housed at Heimer Hampshire's. Her dam was a Dirty South motivation. What made her a champion is definitely me driving her. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's a very good point. No, but naturally she was tall fronted and her shoulder was laid back into her blade, which kept her from being straight fronted so, and stout school and had a set of big rear, rear legs that were very functional. Cool. Um, was this the favorite hog that you've ever shown? Absolutely. Not just because... She was the champion at national show, which is what to do for a very long time. But just her personality and everything, like he, she made you want to go to the barn and get chores done. Well, that is very good. Do you have a lot of more hogs on feed for the rest of this year in 2021? I do. I think I have 12 on feed right now. What's the next show that you're planning on attending, sir? So my next show will be the Mississippi Youth Expo. And then that's coming up pretty soon, isn't it? Yes, sir. That's in December. Wow, that's great. So, other than showing hogs, do you have what are your future goals in the show ring? And if you're involved in livestock judging, I assume you're planning on judging college and stuff like that. My future plans are to graduate high school in May and attend college that fall. I don't know if I want to continue judging through college. But I definitely want to do something in the animal science field. My plans are to keep showing at all the shows that I'm eligible to until I age out and hopefully get some more titles under my belt. Sounds like a good plan. Uh, do you have any 
advice for other pig showmen out there? Or do you have anybody that you want to give a special thanks to that helped you get this huge achievement that you won just here recently in Nally? Absolutely. Never give up. Follow your dreams. Try to be better than you were yesterday. Your biggest competition is yourself. I want to thank everyone that was involved with that hog. Jordan Leatherman, Alan Davis, and Blake Davis, them three together made sure that that pig needed to be shown. Blake picked her out at the sale, so we purchased her. And Alan Davis is one heck of a feeder. He helped us get that thing ready. And Jordan Leatherman can raise some dang good livestock, so that's why she's ended up where she was. I want to thank my parents. Without them busting their tails every day, none of this would have happened. Helping me with purchasing my livestock and everything that needs to be or I need for that show. Well, very good, sir. Again, that is a huge accomplishment. Sounds like you've got a great team behind you, and I bet that you're going to have a great deal of future success. But we just want to say from beyond the ring, congratulations to you on that getting that big banner win there at the North American here this past week. And uh, thanks for coming on and sharing your story with us and a little bit about yourself and your program and good luck to you down the road at the future shows. Thank y'all. It means a lot. And Matthew, again, congratulations, huge, huge accomplishment. And the fact that you were able to to drive the grand champion hog there at, at Louisville, lifelong memory. Enjoy it. Thank you. Our next Louisville legend is Mason Smith from Elk City, Oklahoma. Mason was fortunate enough to exhibit the Grand Champion Market Lamb at the 2020 North American International Livestock Exposition. Mason, welcome to Beyond the Ring. Thank you for having me. Now, Mason, we're we're excited that you're able to to jump on here and and record for us. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your involvement in junior livestock shows to start us off. Okay, uh, I'm from Elk City, Oklahoma. That's located in the southwestern part of the state. I've been showing market lambs since I was nine years old. Um, whenever I was born, my at the time, my grandpa was raising lambs in Sweetwater, Oklahoma, for my parents whenever they showed uh, lambs. Uh, but what really got me into the livestock industry was watching my sister, um, who's four years older than me, seeing the impact the uh, show ring has had on her, and it really made me excited to get into it myself. That That is exciting, Mason. And, and how many years have you shown at the North American? I've shown there five years. Excellent. And obviously this year we we had face masks on and we had to have some wristbands. But outside of that, did you consider it, a, it, did it feel like a normal North American to you? To me, it did. Overall, the experience was very good. You're still able to interact with people pretty regularly. So overall, I saw it as basically any other Louisville. Yeah, I know it. And it's interesting. And I visited with Ryan just a little bit about this. But if you're there in Louisville, as we were this this past week, and you, you hear about what's going on everywhere outside of the country and in the state of Kentucky, that they're literally shutting down everything and canceling Thanksgiving. You can't have family members from outside your household. A lot of crazy things going on. But being right there at that show, it felt to me perfectly normal. And you wouldn't ever believe all this other things are going on outside of that area. Yeah, exactly. No, so it was good. I'm, I'm very thankful they were able to have that. Well, Mason, what other activities are you involved in outside of the show ring? Um, Outside of the show ring, um, I'm currently serving on the Oklahoma Ag Youth Council. I'm involved in FFA. The main things I do are uh, prepare public speaking and land judging. And then I'm involved in a number of like student organizations in my school, as well as cross country and track. Excellent. Sounds like you have your hands full right now. Or is it cross country and track season? Are you allowed to, to compete now in Oklahoma or they've got that shut down? Uh, we were able to have the full cross country season that ended um, the third of November. So right now I'm in off season track, and in our area it hasn't really been too bad. Excellent. Well, that that that's good. I know it's it's obviously different every every school and every region of the country. Tell us a little bit about your your grand champion uh, market lamb. Who'd you buy it from? Sire Dam breed. Anything you think we need to know about that that amazing creature? Well, I think the most important thing would be his name. His name was Duckworth. <laughs> he came from Kendrick Livestock, so I named him after a Kendrick Lamar song. Um, I love it. Yeah, and he was sired by uh, Ring the Bell and named by Priceless. 
and he was a middleweight crossbred and eventually the champion of the crossbred. And something that I thought that made him so good, and Dr. Mark Hogue created this point throughout the show, was that he was very unique, just not a regular looking lamb, and he traveled really, really smooth on the move. Good. So sounds like sounds like a unique creature, hard to make, just just what Dr. Hogue's always searching for. Yes, sir. That that is awesome. What are what are your future goals in the show ring and then then outside of show ring? Have you have you thought about what you're gonna do beyond high school? Well, in the show ring, since I'm a senior and this is my last year, I pretty much only have two main shows left, which is the Denver replacement show that'll take place in January in Chickasha, Oklahoma. And then after that, I'm looking forward to trying to do something in the weather show at the Oklahoma Youth Expo. Excellent. Yes. And then outside of that, after I graduate, I'm going to send, attend Oklahoma State University studying ag business with a pre-law option with the intent of attending law school. And afterwards, I'd like to pursue a career in ag law or pop, possibly as a lobbyist at the state capitol. Excellent. And that career path is is one that, that would certainly benefit our industry. And we need more people with that ag background going into, into that area to represent us. And it seems like each and every year we need more representation such as that. So I'm going to encourage that. Do you have any advice for other exhibitors that are striving to, to get to where you what you achieved this week? And obviously that's that's a dream of almost every market lamb exhibitor, any junior exhibitor out there to win the North American. It's it's a dream that most think, well, I, I just don't know that I can ever get there. It is possible. You did it, Mason. Can you give them any, any guidance or give them any hope that it can be done? Well, the main thing is attention to detail and a consistent schedule. Because obviously, if you're going to take a couple of days off, that could be the difference between win, winning and losing. And then overall, not even for Louisville, but overall, my advice to other exhibitors being my final year is to appreciate the people you've surrounded yourself with. Because like personally, I would not be where I'm at today without the individuals who helped me shape uh, myself through this industry. No, that that is excellent. And it's hard to, to understand the level of commitment that it takes that that you put into this project and the others that we've interviewed from from Louisville and Kansas City. And everything has to, it is so competitive at this point. Everything has to be done exactly as well as we possibly can, or it's not going to happen. And that's hard for me to convey to families that are just getting started. I want to encourage them to do those things, but it, it's pretty overwhelming at first, but it's a, it's a, a situation you can evolve into after a few years that this is just automatic. And if we do all these things, we check all those boxes, we have a chance. We, we can do this. We can accomplish some of these things, but I'd never want to shed any light on that. It doesn't take as much com- more commitment than what most are going to understand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, Mason, we appreciate you being on. Is there anybody else you want to want to thank or, or bring up before we, we let you go here? Uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Ty and Nicole Allen and Cooper and Victoria Newcomb. Uh, they've been vital to my success as a person and as an agriculturist, um, especially in Oklahoma, as well as my parents who have been supporters of everything I do, and especially my sister, Emily, who has been at every big show cheering me on, including Louisville, and pushing me to the best I can I can possibly be. And also Kaylin Urban and Victoria Newcomb, because they are my self-acclaimed good luck charms, because they walked my sheep the day of the show. (laughs) That is excellent, Mason. And you're so well-spoken. It looks like you've got a path in front of you that's very bright and certainly example for others to follow, not only to have success in the show ring, but hopefully some of these things you've developed are going to keep you going in the right direction and benefit you throughout life. But We absolutely appreciate you coming on today. Congratulations, Mason. Thank you very much. Next up is Keegan Murphy from right here in Illinois. Keegan had the Reserve Grand Champion Steer at the North American. Keegan, we are excited to have you on the podcast today, and congratulations on a huge success. Thank you. Keegan, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and and maybe your involvement, how long you've been showing livestock? Well, first, I'd like to congratulate Riley Rogers on her big win. And I am Keegan Murphy. I'm, I'm 13. I'm from Seneca, Illinois. Excellent. And, and for those of you that know, Keegan is, is close enough here from, from Seneca to where I'm at. We probably could have got together and recorded this, but we, we have a governor that likes to keep us locked down on COVID in the state of Illinois. So he's, <laughs> he's at his place and I'm at mine. But I know that I've, I've seen Keegan showing at the Illinois State Fair. And Keegan, have you, have you shown anywhere else besides the Illinois State Fair in Louisville? Uh, I've showed in... A lot of jackpot shows I showed in the Beef Expo, 
Excellent. So you State Fair, yeah. Yep. So you've you've had a chance to get out quite a bit then. Mm-hmm. Um, what what other activities are you involved in besides showing livestock? I like baseball. I like fishing, and then I do hunt. I hunt a lot. And then where do you go fishing up in your area? My grandma lives on a pond or like a lake, and I go fishing there. And I'm open for invitations to go with you. <laughs> I can. I, I'm not far. You can come. <laughs> okay. Can you tell us a little bit about your reserve grand champion steer in terms of what you liked about him or anything special about him? He was really correctly structured. He was big boned. He had big feet and well, he was just really f- fun to work with. I worked with him all summer. He was really fun to work with. You enjoyed that one. Had you always targeted this specific show for him? Mm, well, we we're going to take him to, we were going to go to state fair and we decided to pull him out and then put him in the cooler room for Louisville. No, and that was a good decision, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I have not got to see him in person, but his picture looks just killer good, Keegan. Mm-hmm. I, I think he looks awfully, awfully good. So what are your goals? Are you going to continue to show cattle uh, for the next few years, or what are your thoughts? Um, yeah, I'm going to keep showing cattle, and then I'm going to go to college and hopefully get into animal science and somewhere. And then, Yeah. That- Excellent. No, that that's a that's a great path, and a, a lot of our champions are kind of going that that same direction. Do you have any advice? There's a lot of kids out there, Keegan, a lot of youth that have shown for many many years, and you're able to obtain this this title at a, at a relatively young age. Do you have any advice for those out there? Is it is it is it possible for somebody some younger kid just getting started? Can they can they make this a goal? Is it realistically possible for them? My advice is, if you're going to do it, hard work pays off. And never give up. Once you set a goal, just keep going for it. Excellent. And how much time do you spend with those calves? Let's say once you decided to put him back in the cooler room when you decided not to go to State Fair or the State Fair replacement show, how much how much effort and, and time does that take you every day? It takes a lot. You wake up before sunrise, bring them in, rinse them, put them in the cooler room. And then at night, we'll take them out, we'll feed them, and then do it all over again in the morning. Just continue that cycle, don't you? Mm-hmm. Well, it looks it looks like it paid off, and I can remember I think a couple of years ago one of the steers that your your family was working on that was maybe a reserve champion at the Illinois State Fair. I, I saw in the Champions Barn and just perfectly uh, groomed in terms of fitting and hair care and all of those things. And it takes every single detail to accomplish what you did at the North American. And I I only hope you can get to another national show and and accomplish this again someday. I'm hoping to. Well, Keegan, I look forward to going fishing with you next summer. Yeah. I appreciate you jumping on Beyond the Ring, and and congratulations on your huge success, and we wish you all the best in the future. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. Ryan, it's time for question and answer. Oh, joy. Brought to you by Pope Joy Livestock Transportation, located in Star City, City, Indiana. Stephen Hall's east, west, north, and south. I strongly encourage you to give them a try. Let them prove themselves for your livestock hauling needs. You can find them at Pope Joy Livestock Transportation on Facebook. The first question, Ryan. Are you ready? Shoot. This comes from Monica Griffin. When you're designing a multi-species show barn, what are your top must-haves? I would think if the true having a show barn that has all species, probably the most important things would be depending on the setup and the design of it is depending on where you're going to have those animals turned out at night and that all being accessible and easy to go through and then of course wash rack space and where you're gonna groom and clip those on a daily basis or all that's gotta kind of figure in there and then ventilation and insulation depending on where you live because if you're in Texas it gets real hot but so there's lots of different things that could go into it but I would I would think that you would need to cater that to where those animals are going to be going out at night in terms of the design. Excellent. And Monica, I think uh, what you need is deep pockets because a multi-species barn, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to take quite a bit. We actually built a show barn and it was built to be multi-species. This was prior to us getting in the weather goat business. It was to be. Now it's just Roos place. Yes. It was built to just be a place to hang out, have a a few barrows, a, a couple steers, some weather goats and weather lambs and just kind of enjoyable. And then all of a sudden we filled it completely full of show goats and wean goats and sail goats and every other goat that you can think about. But we did design that to be multi-species. And I think just what Ryan said, we, we need, depending on your location, 
You need to think about the insulation. You need to think about the ventilation. The turnouts, depending on the species, I even think that that goats probably could be turned out. Most of the southern families turn them out. We did not design ours to turn out, but in an ideal world, uh, not a bad idea. We can certainly survive without that. I'm not so sure that we need to turn the pigs out, but the goats and the sheep and, and absolutely on the cattle side. So trying to, to incorporate that into the mix. We're obviously in the north and have to have heat. And we also have a heated wash rack with a, one of the instant hot water heaters. So that that helps out tremendously. And there was a suggestion given to me by one of my close friends that I consider to be very, very intelligent. And he, he can see what things need to be far better than what I can. And he said, well, you need to put in a four foot Wayne's coat of stainless steel around the inside of the barn. And I thought, oh my, this is going to be painful expensive. And it was, but in hindsight, it it was the best decision we made in in the barn to to do just that. So there's, there's lots of different things. and, And I know from our experience, and I think many families that we work with, calculate how many pins you think you need for those animals. Multiply times 10. <laughs> yes, make it bigger. It just, I mean, we never seem to have enough pin space to sort things and feed individually and and all those things. But it's exciting. It sounds like you're going to try to, to re-renovate or build from, from ground up. But to be able to do something like that is exciting. It, it takes a lot of thought and Hopefully that that gives you some guidance in in terms of what direction you you may want to go. And I think maybe, and Ryan alluded to it, the most overlooked, depending on where you're at and if you have to close things up in the winter, is you do need to make sure that ventilation's there. Ryan, the next question Mm -hmm. comes from Joe Dalton. I like this question, Ryan. Oh, that means I'm going to hate it. Next. No, this is is good. Will there be any changes in the stock show world if Camilla, Kamala, Camilla... Harris ends up in the White House? Uh, I would say, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm hopeful that there won't, but I, I that that's well, why I'm just hopeful she doesn't get in there. But I'm <laughs> just it. saying, I'm going to be real honest. Like, I, I am afraid if Trump loses, because we still don't know, but if he loses and Biden and Harris get in there, I mean, it is technically Biden's presidency, I guess, but. I mean, he's already said his first thing's a mask mandate. And again, he can't control the states. But like I've told people, even here this week at Louisville, what they don't understand is Trump really didn't get into the withholding funding from these states based upon their actions of whether they were going to lock down, not lock down, open up, not open up. Uh, I think the Biden-Harris administration will do more of that. And when they start withholding those funds from the states, they have more control and more force on what they can tell them to do because those states have to have that money. And if they're going to hold it back, then they're going to do what they say. So I definitely think that it could take a turn for the worse. I hope not, but, you know. And I I think most of that is going to be threats to try to get the states to do the nationwide mask mandate and and the lockdowns that that they want to do. Um, I can't imagine if they they truly withheld funds or used that to push really hard that four years from now, it's going to be pretty brutal to them. I don't think they can see that far. Uh, you might be right. I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm just... the, the, the other thing is is Kamala talks about, and this this will never happen. If we hold the Senate, life is going to be much better. But Kamala talking about restricting meat, red meat intake and red meat production. Yeah. I mean, that's real, guys. She she talks about it. I don't think if, On again. On her website. Yeah. If we hold the Senate, it, nothing she can do is going to affect those things. But I'll tell you what, and we talked about it last week. If you're donating to a political campaign or ever thought about doing so, you better think about donating to the the race there in Georgia. When is that one going to be held, Ryan? I don't know, but first weekend in January, I think. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's going to be they're going to the, the left is going to dump more money into that those two Senate races than we've ever seen. You want to know something? I did this math earlier this week in those two Senate runoffs. The jungle primary, there was like 17 candidates. So these are the actual numbers that Republicans got between all the candidates, 2,422,245 votes. Democrats got 
85,650 votes, and there was 109,788 in third-party candidates. So if you look at that right there in the jungle primary, the Democrats got more votes than the Republicans did. Now, in the other race where it was just a Republican against a Democrat, where the Republican won, it was 2,448,638 to 2,372,030. But I'm telling you, it's going to be a nail-biter. You see, I, I think some people just assume they're going to hold that. I, I do not. going to be a nail-biter. And I'm not trying to be – I do not want to be negative, and I, I cannot tell you how badly I, I believe we need to hold that. But, wow, we, we need to do anything you can. Those of you in Georgia – I don't care how you get it done, but vote twice, vote three times, grab your neighbors, do do whatever you have to do. I think y'all should riot, loot, find dead people, <laughs> just, whatever, whatever. Just get the job done. I mean, it. I, I'm sure those of you in the state of Georgia understand that this is going to be a big deal. But guess what, guys? It's not just a big deal for Georgia. It is going to affect the each world. and every one of us. It's yeah, not it's just the, the United yeah. States. It's the world. It's it's there and it's it's real. The world. So we, we Georgia have got to. has the world's fate in its hands. Come on, Georgia. As stated by Chuck Schumer, and he will change America was his comment if they win those seats. Ugh. What do you think that means, Ryan, when he says it's gonna change? It means America? I'm moving to Canada. No, they're pretty socialistic there as well. And anyway, we, we I, we're kind of drifting here, almost like we're in current events, but Joe I was asking that qu- answering that question, sir. You're the one that comes up with the questions and answers. I just give the answer. It was a good question, Joe. Thank you. We have one more coming from Jamie Stock. Oh, this one's terrible. Just terrible. Maybe we'll just skip it. It must be about me. <laughs> where does a gay shop for his wardrobe? I don't oh, care where the gay a... shops for his wardrobe. All I know is he spends too damn much money on it. And Period. my stepfather would agree. But moving on. So I get this a lot, but no. Why? Why? Dale, I'm going to like try to explain this to you again. We were at the judging contest in Louisville. I had on this fabulous cheetah print blazer with a bedazzle mask. You had an <laughs> untouched blue and white shirt that was stains on it and a navy vest. This is why people do not want to take pictures with you. I did not have my white shirt on, at least. <sighs> That's true. Only because my all my white shirts were dirty. 95% of my shirts are Robert Graham, and they are not made in China. They're made in <laughs> India. But anyway. <laughs> Uh, but 95% of my shirts are Robert Graham sports coats. I like literally they're all kinds. I mean, I'm like probably 15 plus designers on those. I, I need to, I need to interrupt just briefly. Uh huh. I have never seen a sports jacket like any that you've, you've worn ever in a store. Am I shopping at the wrong places or where? No, because since I'm on the road so much, I do a, m- most of my shopping is really online. And especially, thank God I adopted that policy early because now the malls are all going to be closed because we get the Rona if we go to the malls. But, Got it. Uh, but so, no, uh, most of my shopping's done online. But you would be right. You would not find some of those things. But a lot of people think that my jackets are custom. They are not. Uh, they actually, I find them and have them shipped to me and stuff like that. But so they're all over the board. But most people want to know about my shirts and 95% of those. Or Robert Graham. And yeah, there's that. And Dale thinks they're way too expensive, and so does Daddy James. I don't know how expensive, but I... Yes, you do. You just don't want to bring it up. <clears throat> and oh, I don't either. Painful, painful, painful. Well, Ryan, thank you. It's been been another good week with our Louisville legends. I appreciate and respect the fact that this is, this is history for them. This is lifelong memories. Amazing. Oh, yeah. Until next week, be safe. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>